What is going on people and welcome back to a brand new episode on vehicle electrical installs. If you want to look at some other stuff what we've been covered, you can look at my previous videos. We're nearly at the end of this series now. So if I've not answered your questions, please feel free to send me a message on Facebook or just drop a comment below and I will try and answer your question. But if you haven't seen the other videos, then please do go ahead and watch those because there's a lot of information on those videos and there's every chance that I've already been over the questions what you've got or what someone else may have asked before you. So to the topic, solar charge controllers. What does a solar charge controller do? Well, in general, the output from your solar panels is not an accepted input to your batteries. So if you just connect a solar panel to a battery, the voltage will probably be more, therefore damaging your battery. And the solar charge controller basically just brings that down, it controls the charge to your battery. So that brings it down to an accepted voltage, usually around 14.4 or above, just to charge your batteries. And it also maintains that should there be a spike in sunlight, it will reflect against that and change the voltage. There's probably two that have been popping out a lot when you've been looking for them, and that is PWM and MPPT charge controllers. So let's go over what these two are. So in a nutshell, your PWM are generally cheaper and your MPPT are more expensive. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. And in essence, what this means is your PWM is going to take the required voltage to charge your batteries, and the MPPT is a bit smarter where it can take more voltage and then step it down to charge your batteries. The MPPT generally, as a rule, is more efficient and more effective at getting more charge out of your panels and putting them to your batteries. The PWM can't be connected in series, but is also a lot cheaper. Whereas the MPPT, it can be connected in series, and even though you might not be connecting things in series, use right now in future if you were to install another panel it'd be much easier to connect it because you can just put it in next to it and you won't have any issues if the solar panel can take that sort of input so always check with your solar panel provider because i know some of them do need some sort of relay to stop back feed so if that's answered your question and you are doing this on a budget then pwm is probably the route for you however if you're in cloudy environments or not perfectly sunny all the time your MPPT might be the best option for you and you might want to spend that little bit more money to get a quality MPPT controller over your PWM because you'll be able to extract more energy from the sun during cloudy days and not your typical sunshine days what you'd expect to be getting maximum power out of your solar array from. So now we've cleared up them two, the next question you've probably got is what size solar charge controller do I need? Now we did cover this a little bit on the inverter video where I showed you the power triangle and how you can work out exactly what sort of draw or what current required you need for some of your appliances. And in essence, we're going to use that exact same calculation. So for example, if you have 200 watts of solar panels on your roof and your battery bank is 12 volts, you're going to divide them by each other. So 200 watts divided by 12. I'll just get my calculator out. My quick maths is not that great. So 200 divided by 12, that has given us 16.66 amps. So then my solar charge controller needs to be above 16.7 amps. Generally, they go in 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So always go the one up. You might have issues if you go the one down. So I would recommend always going the one up. The eagle-eyed amongst you now will have noticed that if you have a battery bank that is of a higher voltage, then that means you don't need as big or as expensive as a solar charge controller. Because if we had a 24 volt battery, for example, 200 divided by 24, 8.33 amps. So now we can get a smaller MPPT or the smaller PWM solar charge controller, which might save you some money in the long run just by making your install a different voltage. There are other things to consider when you're doing that and you can't just do that off a whim because your, in your inverter might be a 12 volt inverter and it might not take a 24 volt input. But if you're just setting up your first install now, that might be something you might like to consider. One of the next things you might wanna be looking for is does your particular charge controller have temperature compensation? And what that basically is, is it'll have a little resistor on there that reads the temperature and it's gonna tell your charge controller to charge differently in different temperatures. This is absolutely essential with your cheaper batteries, your lead acid batteries. Those sorts of batteries are really, really affected by the temperature. So it is, it is essential if you're going down the cheaper battery route. You will get away with not doing it, but as best practice, you definitely want to get temperature sensored charging through your MPPT or your PWM solar charge controller. So that's something to bear in mind with the absolute bottom spec ones, the cheap ones, which might add, might be fine for your, your application, 
and you might not need to worry about it at all. If you're going that cheaper route, they might not have the temperature sensor input so it can adjust the charging. Airflow for your heat sink. You'll see a lot of these solar charge controllers will have a heat sink on the back. Some of the more expensive ones are just a heat sink, a big aluminium block with some circuitry inside and the full thing dissipates the heat. These, by default, they're going to get quite hot. So if you do have a heat sink, try not to cover it with something that is not allowing airflow behind it. You don't need a fan on it or anything like that, but just to allow that heat to expel through the heat sink. So whereas I've done it, I've done it inside a little tight closed area here, and I've, I've made sure that I've not put anything on top or on the bottom of the solar charge controller. I've not like, it's not in an open vented space, but I've just made sure that it ca air can go around the back of it should it get too hot because as air gets hot, heat rises and it should drag colder air through the bottom. Like I say, it's not super sensitive, but always make sure you've got a little bit of airflow there. And I did watch a fantastic YouTuber called Will Prowse and uh, I'm not sure of this guy's background, but he explains things quite well. And if you're a bit of a nerd like me and you like to know the nitty gritty of pretty much everything you install, then this is the guy for you. This guy solely specializes on solar DIY solar installs and he's got a lot of information for you. And one of the key points that I found from it is he tests the components. So if you're looking at buying some stuff, he's tested quite a few MPPTs side by side and PWMs side by side. And his results kind of showed that it doesn't really matter how much you spend on them. So when you're buying a solar charge controller, if you spend more, you're not getting more power out of your panels. That's just not how it works. You will get slightly more from an MPPT over a PWM, but it's not enough to really justify spending the extra money. Like I say, I would recommend getting an MPPT, but if you're on a budget and you are trying to funnel money into different parts of your vehicle, Maybe you could go with a PWM for now and get an MPPT later when the, when the budget suits more. But his test results did show that from the most expensive MPPT to the cheapest MPPT, they had the same output or negligible. So the only difference you're getting when you're spending more on a solar charge controller is one, the interface, and two, the longevity of it. Now, I haven't heard of much of these breaking and a lot of these are rebranded. So you'll probably see when you're shopping for them, some of them look the exact same, but they've got a different sticker on. They're rebranded, Chinese production. Companies will buy them, put their own brand on, and then sell them to you. Now, they do vary in different ways. You might have some different terminals on one. You might have smaller terminals on the other, larger terminals on the, on the other. Um, so they do vary. They are different, but the internal, the internal components are generally the same. If it looks the same, it probably is the same. So that's something to consider. I went run of the mill, straight down the middle. I got a Tracer MPPT, which I believe, it, again, is a rebrand of, of another company. And mine's been holding up just fine. But if I were to do it again, I'd probably go with one of the cheaper ones. But do bear in mind that some of them don't have displays and you might have to buy an external display afterwards and route that out to somewhere that you can see it. But mine has got a display and I don't use the display because it's hidden inside my cupboard. And if I did want to see my solar output and that was something that interested me, then I would have to buy a secondary display anyway. So that's not a selling point so much if you're hiding it away. What I have done is I have connected basically a voltage sensor to my uh, battery mon monitoring system so I can individually see what my panel voltage is so I can just check that they're still working. Because if you have been following my videos, you have noticed I had some solar panel issues before where they failed. Now I've replaced the panels and it took me quite a long time to dig in and test the panels. I've now put a voltage sensor on there so I can check it at any time. Just to summarize on the video, get an MPPT if you can. Make sure it's rated for your solar panel array. If you want to future proof it again, make sure you uprate it or get an MPPT so you can series link them into it if you're on an absolute budget then pwm is probably the option for you i will catch you in the next video